Tickets are being sold after Mass this weekend for the Boy Scout Troop 364 Barbecue next Sunday, April 22nd, at the Cathedral Center. Information flyers about the various youth ministry programs in our parish are available in the main entrance of the church after Mass. The music for the sung parts of the Mass can be found on the white sheets in the pew racks. As a kind reminder, we ask you to turn your, your cell phones to silent. Good morning and welcome to the Cathedral of Our Lady of Victory as we celebrate the third Sunday of Easter. The processional hymn is number 206, All on Earth, number 206. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We gather around the altar of the Lord Jesus as we continue to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus in this time of Easter. We join in prayer with those that are in their homes or hospitals, in nursing centers throughout our diocese, we pray in a special way for the sick and for the suffering, that God's healing love will be with them. Jesus reminds us in our gospel today that we are called to be authentic witnesses of his resurrection so that people can see in us the presence of the risen Lord in the world. But sometimes we fail in doing so. We sin, and so we ask God to forgive us. I confess to Almighty God, May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You decided the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment the he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. 
He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, for the, but for those for the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. You are witnesses of these things. As we continue to read in this time of Easter from the Acts of the Apostles, which describes the early workings of the young Christian church, I recall the words spoken to me by an elderly gentleman the other day, and he said, regardless of how old we are or how many years we have been a Christian, we are all still young Christians. I think of those that were recently baptized at the Easter Vigil. They are young Christians. But I believe the gentleman is right that spoke the words to me that we are all young Christians, for so indeed we are, meaning we still have a lot to learn, not just about theology, not just about the Bible, those are, that's important. 
I believe we all have a lot more to learn about Jesus Christ, about the risen Lord, about his presence in our lives, about what he is asking of us as his followers. Like the first disciples, we all encounter the risen Lord in some form or fashion. Every day, if we open our eyes and see. But like the early apostles, the first followers of Jesus, sometimes we doubt, sometimes we are terrified, we're overwhelmed. In a way, maybe we, like them, think, I'm seeing a ghost. Jesus is very real. The presence of Christ is with us. And so Jesus asked them two questions. Why are you troubled? And then he asked them, and why do questions arise in your hearts? Good questions for us as well, more than 2,000 years later. Why are we so troubled in our individual lives? Why are we so troubled in our families, and our marriages? Why do we have so much distress and that overwhelming feeling, sometimes even of helplessness? Why are we so troubled if we believe in the presence of the risen Lord? Nowhere does Jesus say in the Bible, and certainly not by the example of his life, that as his followers we won't have problems, that we won't have encounters that we're going to be, have to confront, be it through our health, our emotional state, financially, spiritually, socially, relationally, and the list goes on and on. Jesus never said that we're not going to be tempted. He has come to give us new life. He has come to free us from our sins, but the problems will still be there. But what has to be different, the reason he asked these questions to his first followers and why I believe they're still pertinent to us is he is saying when he asks, why are you so troubled? Why do questions arise in your hearts? Because he's saying, why do you doubt my presence? Why do you doubt my help? Why, why do you not seek me more and invite me into your problems and invite me into your relationships and invite me into your daily walk on this earth? I believe we are so troubled because as young Christians, we have yet to really see that God in Christ wants us to surrender all to him and to trust him above all else. There's going to always be questions. There's going to be times of doubt. But there comes a point in our Christian faith when questioning must lead to believing, and believing must lead to living as authentic witnesses of Christ. Jesus told his first followers, after describing to them why he had to suffer and die, and he informed them what his resurrection means. And then he said to them, as he says to us today, you are witnesses of these things. To be a witness to Christ in our faith is to make a public affirmation by word and example of our faith and our conviction that Jesus Christ is alive. In a world that is filled with so much doubt and uncertainty, Jesus wants us to be his witnesses to what has taken place. What has taken place not just more than 2,000 years ago, but the effect of his resurrection today, the difference that his resurrection can make for all of us as his people, as his children. So to be a witness to the risen Christ is to live with conviction, is to live in faith in spite of the problems that come, so that when the problems come, as they always do, we bring our faith to those issues. We bring the faith that we have in the risen Lord to whatever it is that's troubling us in our marriages, in our families, and in work, or whatever it may be. How do we live as those true witnesses? St. John tells us in our second reading today. He says, the way that we may be sure that we know him 
is to keep his commandments. And those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. And John will go on to say in his letter that we can be reassured of our faith in the Lord Jesus, and we can proclaim it as his witnesses to all the world of our conviction that Jesus is alive by keeping those commandments. That's a good test for us. If we seek to bring all to the Lord, if we testify to the presence of the risen Lord in our lives as his followers, it means that we're going to be faithful in keeping his commandments, that we're going to adhere to the truth that he has brought to us, so that when we fail, we know there is a remedy for that failure. We know there is healing and forgiveness that the risen Lord Jesus brings to us. And so we experience reconciliation. We call upon the Lord in the sacraments to heal us, and then we move forward in our lives, not being stuck in our sinfulness, in our weaknesses, but through them being freed so that we can grow stronger in living our faith. Someone once said that the evidence of Jesus' resurrection is so strong that nobody would question it except for two things. One, it is a very unusual event. And two, if you believe it happened, you have to change the way you live. So here lies the challenge of our Christian faith. Do we live differently because of our belief in the resurrection of Jesus Christ? As I said last year at Easter in my homily, are we a people of the tomb or a people of the resurrection? Do we live in darkness or do we live in the light of Christ? If we believe Jesus rose from the dead, then we are going to live as a resurrected people, which means that our lives will be different. We can't live in the same way. And faith will tell us in our conviction that we don't want to. Why would we? Jesus didn't remain in the tomb. Why would we remain in the tomb? Yes, we are all young Christians with much more to learn, but we rejoice for the risen Lord is with us. He teaches us. He shows us the way. And so, as we begin this new week and the joy of this time of Easter, let us seek to be witnesses to the world that indeed we believe in the resurrection of Jesus, not by what we say, but because we are a changed people, for we believe that he is risen. Rejoicing in the presence of the risen Lord, we profess what we believe as his followers. I believe in one God, the Father.
as believers in the risen Lord, we offer to our loving God our needs and prayers this day. For all who minister in the universal church, may they be sustained by God's merciful grace to preach repentance for the forgiveness of sins to all people. We pray to the Lord. For Christians around the world, may we who were baptized into his death take seriously our duty to bear witness to Christ in our lives. We pray to the Lord. For our nation's leaders, may they use the financial resources received from U.S. citizens to make the country a better place for all who call it home. We pray to the Lord. For those celebrating their confirmation this weekend, may they joyfully receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit and be empowered to give faithful witness to God through their lives. We pray to the Lord. For our parish family, may we find it in our hearts to repent for what we have done wrong and forgive those who have done wrong to us. We pray to the Lord. For all the faithful departed and for the repose of the souls of Maria Arundanda Orta and Norley Yanak, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. For the needs listed in our parish intention book and for those we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Loving Father, we are grateful in this time of Easter for the renewal you bring to us. We pray for a deepening of our faith so that as we seek the risen Lord, that we will truly adhere to our faith in Jesus by what we say and do. And we ask that you answer these prayers through Christ our Lord. The hymn for the presentation of the gifts is number 316, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling, number 316.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church. And as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him, the children of light rise to eternal life and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death, Father, is our ransom from death and in his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. For indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, in giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Brendan our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Communion hymn is number 244, Taste and See, number 244.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. The recessional hymn is number 313, the summons, number 313.